Is this the beginning of the end for one Mikel Arteta? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Yes, today's video is going to centre around the Arsenal boss currently known as Mikel Arteta. Is this the beginning of the end as far as being Arsenal boss is concerned for the Spaniard? Yesterday, of course, he watched his Arsenal side crash out of the FA Cup at the hands of Liverpool, in which Arsenal dominated large parts of the game. They were brilliant throughout most of that game, but they just were lacking in one particular area, and that was the final third. Having a cutting edge, having a prolific nature in front of goal to really kill the game off when they were on top. And despite creating a numerous amount of chances... They couldn't put the ball into the back of the net and were ultimately punished late on in the second half when Liverpool managed to find that goal-scoring touch that Arsenal were lacking. Trent Alexander, well, I say it was Liverpool. The first goal was actually from Arsenal's own uh, Jakub Kiria, who headed home Trent Alexander-Arnold's through dangerous free kick into his own box. The irony there being, of course, despite all of Arsenal's great chances, it was a defender who scored. And he didn't even score in the right net. So irony there that an Arsenal player actually did go on and score yesterday, but not in the correct net. And then very late on in the game, in the dying embers, Luis Diaz put the game beyond all doubt and secured Liverpool's place into the fourth round of the FA Cup by firing home beyond Aaron Ramsdale in the Arsenal goal. It was an interesting game. It was a topsy-turvy, crazy game. And as the second half drew on... It was a very entertaining end-to-end -end sort of basketball feel to the game in which both teams seemingly threw a bit more caution to the wind. Liverpool more so given the fact that the bar was put awfully low for them to improve upon from their awful first half display. But it was Liverpool at the end of the day who by hook or by crook went on to win that game and secure their place in the next round of the competition. I said in the preview, and I also re uh, mentioned it again in the review of that game, that this, to me, was Arsenal's best chance of obtaining silverware this season. I said that the Premier League, I've always backed Manchester City for, and I still back them even though my club of Liverpool are still top of the league. I still think City are the favourites. I said that the Champions League is not going to be Arsenal's this year. I see bigger and better teams in that competition that will meet Arsenal down the line and can easily knock them out. Well, not easily, but I think they can knock them out of that competition. And I don't really see Arsenal picking up Champions League silverware there. And as far as what the FA Cup goes, I said that was their best chance of obtaining silverware, especially after their Carabao Cup exit very early on in that particular competition. In doing this, in knocking them, in being knocked out of the FA Cup, I firmly believe that it will be another trophyless and silverwareless season for the Gunners this year. And maybe, just maybe, after the entire project that has been going on under Mikel Arteta at Arsenal, with the amount of money that's been thrown around at this club, uh, by this club, maybe the Spanish manager has taken this club as far as what he can go and maybe it's time to have the conversation or begin to maybe look for his replacement long term beyond the end of this current campaign. We're going to be exploring that, we're going to be talking about it, we're going to be talking about yesterday's game, we're going to be talking about obviously Mikel Arteta and maybe he has run his course as the Arsenal manager and everything else in between but before we go any further I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both of them are always a favourite, greatly appreciated and of course I, I encourage you lot to get involved in the comments section. Let me know your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it in regards to Arsenal, in regards to Mikel Arteta, in regards to everything and anything to go on with this particular club. But without further ado, let's get on with the video. Let's talk Mikel Arteta. Let's talk Arsenal and everything else in between. Yesterday's game, from an Arsenal point of view, performance-wise, was everything that you could probably want from a big game. Arsenal played exceptionally well. They just couldn't put the ball into the back of the net. And I think it's going to be crazy if Arsenal do not sign a striker this, uh, this January. Don't give me... Or anybody else, the, the the absolute waffle of the January market isn't quite the market we're looking for. The January market isn't that good. The January market, the, there's never normally the right player available. Ridiculous. As a Liverpool fan, I've seen us go for the likes of Luis Diaz, Luis Suarez, and of course, big money in Virgil van Dijk. Don't give me the absolute terrible spin of... 
the January transfer window is not the right market for Arsenal to be going in. If there's a deal to be made, the money can be put up for it and the deal will be done. I know that as a Liverpool fan. Like I say, I've seen it time and time again. I've seen crazy January transfer windows from Liverpool. I've seen big money signings enter Liverpool. I am not going to buy into that spin of the January transfer market is not there for Arsenal. It's there for everybody. And believe me, if Liverpool came out and said the same thing, even though there was a lot there for the taking from a Liverpool fan's point of view this season especially, I would be saying the exact same thing. There is, you just need to do it. Arsenal need a striker. That's the one thing that was letting them down yesterday, and that was the difference between the two teams. When Liverpool had chances, they put the ball into the back of the net. When Arsenal had chances, they didn't. Kai Havertz is not that guy. And I'll come on to Kai Havertz a little bit more later on, because the overall arching story to come out of this is whether or not it is time for Arteta to maybe move on. Yesterday's performance, I don't think, can be put down a lot on him. You may be able to look at little things, maybe like substitutions. Why did he leave Eddie Nketiah to only come on with only five minutes to go? Why is he continuing to play Bukayo Saka through this really bad form that Saka's going on right now? Why, um, why did his game management sort of slip from him? Why did he lose control of the game the later the game wore on? And why did he not neutralise Liverpool in the areas that was so blindingly obvious that where we were doing most of our attacking down the wings? No, Nunes down the left, Diaz down the right. That's where we were just putting most of the balls over the top and we were just letting them run onto them to obviously obtain more space, go further forward and to obviously be dangerous and a threat to that Arsenal back line. Where did his game management go the later the game wore on? There are little things you can critique him for and you can criticise him for during that game. But ultimately, I don't think you can necessarily criticise what happened on the pitch. Arsenal missed a great deal of chances yesterday. Some really big chances at that yesterday through no fault of Mikel Arteta's. That's down to the players on the pitch. Now, if you want to dig deeper into it, maybe you can criticise Arteta. Maybe you can criticise the club. 60 million on Kai Havertz. I still had my doubts over it. Even when Kai Havertz was seemingly picking up a bit of form and he was picking up a few goals and assists here and there, I still questioned whether or not this was going to be the guy to really get you through these tough games. The amount of chances he had yesterday and the amount of misses he had yesterday was laughable. And believe me, I say that as a Liverpool fan who's got Darwin Nunes up front. So I know what it means to have a striker who misses big chances. You can look at other players. Declan Rice is fine. No problem with Declan Rice whatsoever. Absolutely top quality signing. Understand that signing. What, uh, one million percent. But not to buy a striker. Keeping Eddie Nketiah, who is not good enough. Even though I said that he probably should have come on earlier in the game, at least he is a striker. It probably would have helped. I'm just saying. There's always that chance that Nketiah may go for a bit of a purple patch, as he tends to do from time to time. Maybe that would have been the game yesterday in which could have kicked off his purple patch. I don't know. Saka playing through that bad form. Who else have you got at right wing, really? Who else have you got at right wing? The goalkeeping situation has always been lingering over his head as well. Like, you can't really fault Ramsdale yesterday, but it's a stick that I've said time and time again, has been in the background, lingering over his head for a while. And I said that if those things, if the Kai Havertz gamble and the gamble to bring in David Rea was, was going to backfire, they would be two massive sticks that anyone and everyone would have used to beat him over the head with. And that is exactly what will happen, what may happen, what is going to happen and what is currently happening all at the same time. Those things are down to the club and Mikel Arteta if he personally signed off on them because they are not good enough. Not necessarily the goalkeeper. I'm still okay with the goalkeeper situation from the outside looking in. But the Kai Havertz one especially, when you know you need a striker and when you know that ne not necessarily Havertz and Odegaard can necessarily play together... It's frustrating. Even from the outside looking in, it's frustrating. Because they're not because Kai Havertz especially is not good enough. And you look at all the other players that are around him, you look at 
how Arteta's tried to control the chaos a bit more. Last season, Arsenal were chaotic and that made them dangerous. That made them frightening at times and that made them play some absolutely scintillating and beautiful football. This season, it's not quite been the same. Now, maybe part of that is down to the opposition getting to know Arsenal a bit more, getting used to the way that they play and not maybe overlooking them um, as not a serious contender. They are a serious contender and maybe uh, opposition fans are starting to take note and starting to really book up their ideas and maybe take them a bit more seriously than what they were last season. Part of that also is down to Arteta trying to control the chaos a little bit, in my opinion, trying to calm Arsenal down a little bit to be more controlled and, and a bit more... Just a bit more in control, really, in, overall across the entirety of the situation and scenarios at play. But it's lacking. It's lacking intensity at times. It's lacking that tenacious kind of pressing game that worked so well yesterday. Liverpool couldn't handle it yesterday. But we haven't seen it enough this season. But it's alright having that. It's alright having the beautiful play. But if you haven't got anyone to put the ball into the back of the net, you've not got a working team. Because that's what I fault Chelsea for. Not having someone to put the ball into the back of the net numerous times. I faulted Brighton for that on numerous times down the years. For not having someone to put the ball into the back of the net. And now I'm talking about the same situation happening at a different club in Arsenal. You can look at Mikel Arteta and, and the club and you can say, why did you spend that much money on a on what is going to be a new goalkeeper who they're going to get on a permanent transfer at the end of the season? Still a lot of money. Why did you spend that much money on a Kai Havertz? It baffles me. And it baffles me even more that they are seemingly not going to go into the transfer market for a striker. The Premier League title race is not over. As much as I don't think that they're favourites to win it, the Premier League title race is not over. They could easily go into the market, get a striker, and they could be a real force again towards the end of the season. And they could really, really put pressure on the likes of Liverpool and Manchester City as the running uh, as, as the running gets closer and closer. And then ultimately, when the running is here and we're going down to the end and to the wire of the season, they could really step up their game 100%. But I do fear for them. I do fear if they don't get that striker, they won't have enough firepower to do that. I fear for them that Mikel Arteta has done all of this and it's going to result in nothing. Now, don't get me wrong. I've backed Mikel Arteta a lot down the years. I've said that I like what he's doing. I say I like the project that he's under. I like that Arsenal have acted like a big club at times, splashing the cash here and there. Not necessarily on the players that I would have ne probably gone for, mainly Kai Havertz, uh, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean in terms of actually splashing the cash and doing the business when they need to. But I do fear for them that this goalkeeping situation has taken centre stage. The signing of Kai Havertz has been a gamble that hasn't worked. And I feel like, although he's probably taken them further than anybody probably thought he would go into being title contenders, title challengers, top four, whatever you want to call it, maybe for maybe, uh, maybe as far as what he could go further than what a lot of people expected. I expected him to be a top four manager and that be it. I didn't expect him to be title challengers. I was proven wrong last season on that. But I do feel like he may have taken them as far as what he can go. And I do feel like some of the decisions that he's made as, as Arsenal manager in terms of transfers and little things like that may come back to bite him. And that's where I think the conversation needs to be had as to whether or not Arteta's taken him as far as what he can go. He's laid down the foundations and now it may be time to bring in a manager who is a complete upgrade just to do a few little tweaks and little uh, modifications of that squad, of the club, of the team, whatever it may be, to try and get them over the line to being title winners, maybe even Champions League winners, trophy winners in general. I, like I said, I don't necessarily think Arteta's going to do it this season. I don't think they're going to win the Premier League. I don't think, they, I definitely don't think they're going to win the Champions League. Stranger things have happened, of course, and maybe come the end of the season, I'll revisit this video and maybe prove them wrong. But I think Arteta personally has taken them as far as what he can go. I think the big decisions that he's made are going to come back and bite him horribly. 
And I just overall believe that maybe it's time for Arsenal to consider a longer term replacement who is an upgrade on Mikel Arteta. Those are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of Mikel Arteta and Arsenal going forward this season? What do you make of um, anything that I've talked about in this video in regards to both of these two? Uh, both of these two things. I'd love to know your thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, down below in the comment section. Because I'm sure it'll make for interesting and great reading. Otherwise, hit the like button on the way out. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new. Want to see more content based both things are always very greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video, and I'll see you speak with you all again soon in another video or live stream or whatever it may be. Cheers, guys! Thanks everyone for watching and stopping by. Have a good rest of your day. Take care. Talk to you again soon.